Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now in this video, we'll take a look at a fairly new release, the Quanchang UV K5, a handheld transceiver that covers from 50 megahertz up to 600 megahertz on receive. You may have also come across the same radio labeled as another manufacturer. Write down in the comments below what models you've seen this as. Now this includes AM reception on the aviation band as well, but how good does that work? We'll find out later. The specifications show that transmitting is supported between 136 to 176 MHz and then 400 to 469 MHz. However, there is a procedure you can do which will enable transmit on the 1.25 meter band. More on how to do this later and if it's actually worth doing. Pre-programmed memories for the American NOAA weather forecast channels are also included so you don't need to program yourself if you live in the US. The usual accessories are supplied in the box, apart from a much needed programming cable. So if you want to program the memories, then don't forget to order yourself a programming cable if required. In fact, I just used the Retifis programming cable that I had already here in the shack. So if you've got one, just try using that. Included manual is pretty well written in fully understandable English and does appear to explain most of the features quite well. Even I was able to read it and understand it. However, there is one particular feature that is mentioned in the specification that doesn't work as you would think, and that's the crossband communication. Now, as most of us know, when talking about crossband, we would normally assume the radio would automatically receive on one frequency and then transmit the received audio on another band. Well, that's just not the case with this, just so you know. The included antenna supports between 136 to 174 MHz and then 400 to 480 MHz according to the imprint on the bottom of the antenna. For use outside these frequencies, I would recommend using another antenna that's specifically tuned for those frequencies you want to receive. The included battery is rated at 1600 mAh at a voltage of 7.2 volts. Now this can be charged using the supplied desktop mains charger or you can use the USB-C socket, which is in the side of the radio, to charge the battery. Now, my box didn't include a USB-C cable, but they're fairly easy to come by from the likes of Amazon or eBay. And the radio itself does have a solid feel, although it is fairly light, which doesn't give that top-tier feel. However, the buttons do feel quite nice, and they're very responsive. Now, switching between VFO A and B, and then between VFO and memory mode, does require the use of the function button, which is found in the bottom right corner of the backlit keypad. Also, all main functions are accessible from this method. The left side of the radio hosts the PTT button along with two function buttons. Now these function buttons can be programmed within software for either short or long press operation, meaning up to four different functions can be configured. Now these functions range from disabling the squelch momentarily activating the built-in FM radio, or even turning the LED torch on and off. The right side of the radio, we see the usual speaker mic connection, which again also doubles up as a programming port. Underneath this, we find a USB-C port, which is used for only charging the batteries. Now I long for the day where the USB port can also be used for charging and programming to save having separate cables for both. Place your bets now on the first manufacturer to do this. The top of the radio hosts a status LED, also another white LED which acts as a kind of torch and a large bright orange rotary control for powering off and on and controlling the volume. Now once powered on, you'll be presented with the nice clear display which is backlit for a maximum of five seconds. Now I couldn't find anywhere to have the backlight permanently turned on, but it does activate when receiving or if you touch a control on the radio. The menu system is quite unique, something which I personally have not seen before. The main menu items are listed on the left side, controllable with the up and down arrow buttons, and the changeable value is on the right. Now, most features and functions can be accessed by the radio's menu system if you do not want to use a computer. Now, the UVK5 offers a unique cloning method, which if you have two radios, you can send a radio's memories to the other via RF. Now, unfortunately, I don't have two of them, so I can't show you this working, but it is detailed in the manual. 
Now, if you want to be able to transmit on the 1.25 meter band, then you will need to unlock this. To do this, just power up the radio while holding the top function button along with the PTT. You'll now be presented with a menu which you can turn on or off certain bands for transmit. Unfortunately though, it doesn't unlock transmit for the 6 or 4 meter handband, but it does receive there as standard. Bit of a shame that. A receiving air band is also possible and the radio does switch to AM for the aviation band. Now, even the radio has scanning capabilities, it's not really that great for air band as it's quite slow. It would however be useful for those that just want to monitor a single air band frequency though. Now power output on the 2 meter band at 145.5 MHz is coming in around 3.5 watts. And then up on the 70 centimeter handband at 433.5 MHz we see around 3.87 watts. Now what's disappointing is the power output at the 1.25 meter band on 220 MHz. Now this comes in around 90 milliwatts according to my power meter. Maybe this is why the 1.25 meter band is turned off as standard on this particular model. Now the FC function, otherwise known as frequency copy, is a feature where it puts the radio into a kind of quick clone mode for one frequency. The idea is, is that you hold another radio close by and transmit. The UVK5 is then supposed to pick up on this frequency and any CTCSS tones and then set itself. Now as you can see from my test, it didn't quite get the frequency right. Maybe I needed to hold the radio further away. The inbuilt speaker is fairly decent with a good output. Should be okay for busy areas or for those that need the volume loud. Yeah, Mike 3, Lima, Lima Uniform Sugar. Um, with uh, uh, GHEYW. Uh, thank you there, Mike, and then pass it on to uh, M3 LUS. Uh, GHEYW, G4D well. Uh, Mike 3L US, <coughs> Mexico 3, Lima Uniform Sugar. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, uh, Martin. Uh, I didn't catch the other guy's uh, call sign. It's quite quiet, though, this end to me. I... As normal, I hooked up the UVK5 to my tiny SA Ultra and keyed the radio on 145 MHz so we can check the levels of any harmonics. Now, the fundamental showing here is 17.3 dBm, and the first harmonic is minus 27.9 dBm. So that's a greater value of minus 40 dB, which is great. Now I performed the same test on 70 centimeters and the fundamental was at 18 dBm, while the first harmonic was at minus 24.9 dBm. So that's good at more than 40 dB down. Now I also performed the same test at 220 megahertz. Now this wasn't so good with the fundamental at 12 dBm and the first harmonic at minus 18 dBm, so it was only down around 30 dB. Maybe this is why it's not opened as standard. Transmitted audio from the UVK5 actually sounds pretty good. With my SDR Play SDR receiver set up, this is what I sounded like on two meters. This is M0 DQW, mic zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing audio on a mic at level setting four. This is mic level setting four. M0 DQW talking around two to three inches away from the radio. M0 DQW. This is M0 DQW. M0 DQW testing the audio on a mic level one. This is a mic level one uh, testing audio one, two, three, four, five. The programming software is free and you can download that from the internet. It actually looks like a quite a nice application and it doesn't have that kind of generic OEM feel. There's lots of features and functions that you can configure within the software, including all of the memories and the functions and how the radio actually works. Uploading and downloading to the radio is fairly quick, so you don't have to wait ages to program it. You'll probably spend more time entering in the frequencies for each of the memories. Anyway guys, that's the Quansheng UVK5 handheld radio. Now, even though it's possible to transmit on other bands, I'd probably say this is really only a 2 and 70 dual band handheld. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.